Scotland Yard. So called because it is neither in Scotland nor is it a yard. <laughs> in Scotland Yard, in a box in the corner in an old broom cupboard, are the records of cases. Histories of every branch of the law, from larceny to being a blood relative of Keith Chagrin. <laughs> all of these cases have been covered by Edgar Duskarton, who now presents another story of Scotland Yard. Good evening. Tonight, the headless corpse of Haringey. We've done that one. <laughs> Tonight, the limbless limbo dancer of Leighton Stone. Yeah, done him twice. The silent stiffy of Stanmore. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight, the silent stiffy of Stanmore. <laughs> What about the body? Well, sir, it looks like she put up a bit of a fight. Indeed she had. But not enough to prevent the murderer from severing her subclavicle artery and leaving a three millimeter deep indentation in her cranial cortex. <laughs> I managed to scrawl a tiny illegible clue as to her identity. <laughs> that doesn't help us very much, does it? Hang on a minute, sir. What is it? Looks like a blood stain. Fresh, too. Blood? Right. Inspector Johns went to work immediately. A mild solution of ammonia and warm water managed to loosen the stain, whilst a damp cloth and blotting paper brought it to the surface. Before long, he had got rid of it completely. Right. Let's get her down to the boys at the path lab. Get onto the pavement. You're right there. Oh, I oh. <laughs> what have you found, Ted? Something very interesting, Tony. If you mix the egg white with a little sugar before popping in the pan, you'll make perfect souffles every time. <laughs> Whilst dissecting the slightly decomposing corpse, splattering himself with lymphoid tissue and pancreatic acids, which spurted in a magnificent redness, he realised he had discovered a bullet. So, now we know that the deceased was either shot by a bullet fired from a gun, or else she threw herself at over 200 miles an hour on a stationary <laughs> What about the murderous prince? Yeah. 19th century hunting scenes. Anything else? Yes. Using her dental records, we've managed to construct a detailed model of her lower jaw. And a model of a little ship, which fits easily into a bottle. <laughs> what about the killer himself? Who was this man whose warped mind derived pleasure from repeatedly plunging a knife through skin into tissue, into blood, into sinew, through vital organs? The inspector felt he was banging his head against a brick wall. <laughs> it's a time like these that every detective needs his share of luck. And Inspector Johns was about to take delivery of his. Cigarette? Yes. Good. I always like a second opinion. So you think you may have seen the murderer leaving the scene? That's right, Inspector. I was walking past the victim's house a few days ago when... Oh, what a lovely day for a murder. For Armada. What a lovely day for a Spanish Armada. <laughs> Tom, we've got him. Meet me at the yard in five minutes. Right, Inspector. Get out the road, get out the road. I'm getting on the path. Quick, right. Hang on, Miss The man's a damn psychopath. Me too. Oh, oh. <laughs> So the police finally caught up with the fiendish killer of the silent stiffy of Stanmore. But this was a killer that was to elude the clutches of the law. Good night.
Edgar Duskarton, I arrest you in the name of the law. <laughs> Edgar Duskarton, I arrest you in the name of Edgar Duskarton. Yes, that's better. <laughs> All the credits. Uh, uh, can't I have just one more? No. Come on. <laughs> Our policeman's truncheon is no friend of the skull. Shut up, Duskarton. <laughs> A policeman's knee is no friend of the groin. Shut up. <laughs>